It has been almost a decade since an unidentified object crashed into the Pacific Ocean off the coast of Papua New Guinea. It's known as IM-1, and it could be the first interstellar object found on Earth. Now, now after a year and years and years and years of effort and a $1.5 million recovery mission, two Harvard scientists say they may have actually found pieces of IM-1 about a mile deep in the ocean after pinpointing the exact trajectory of the object and dragging what they called a magnetic sled all along the ocean floor. Just last week, the pair recovered 50 unusual iron spheres that they believe were able to withstand four times the pressure that would typically destroy an ordinary iron metal meteor. So what does it mean? Could the object actually be what they call artificial in origin and maybe even part of an interstellar spacecraft? Joining me now is Professor Avi Loeb, also known as the Alien Hunter of Harvard, uh, who made this discovery alongside astrophysics students Amir Siraj. Thank you so much for being with, with us, Avi. I got to say, it's, it's exciting uh, to talk to someone with the nickname Alien Hunter uh, of Harvard. Uh, but, but this is serious. I mean, I know they've been searching uh, for years. How can you be sure um, that this is the object uh, that crashed back in 2014? Well, first we localized the, the path of this meteor and we used the seismometer data in Manus Island, Papua New Guinea. We found the distance uh, where the explosion took off based on the time delay between the signal of light that was detected by US government sensors and the signal of sound that was detected by this seismometer. And we went there with a, a ship uh, and we searched that area. We crisscrossed that uh, region of about 10 kilometers in size. And we found most of the spherules along the path that we anticipated. And uh, that is already tentative evidence. We plan to examine the material composition of the relics that we found. These are uh, basically met metallic uh, spheres, uh, marbles, that we found on the ocean floor, roughly a millimeter in size. I just received the, the FedEx package with those uh, spherules. You can see one of them right here in my hand. It's tiny in a vial, um, roughly a millimeter in size, a milligram in mass. And they are the molten droplets of the surface of this object that we found. And we plan to examine what they're made of, what kind of radioactive isotopes they carry. And uh, by that, demonstrate that they are from outside the solar system. And of course, the first evidence we had for that is the high speed of this object above the escape speed from the solar system. So clearly, it seems like it came from far away. And the question is, is it natural or maybe artificial in origin? Well, that's interesting you bring that up when you say artificial. Of course, a lot of people, when they hear this, they immediately start thinking of aliens, UFOs. Um, is there a chance that this is part of like a non-human craft or something like that? In principle, yes, because the material strength of this object was higher than all space rocks that NASA cataloged over the past decade, uh, 272 of them, uh, including iron meteorites. And moreover, this object was moving faster than 95% of all stars in the vicinity of the sun. So there is a possibility that it was propelled by some rocket and that it was made of some alloy like uh, steel that made it uh, tougher than all the space rocks that we are familiar with. Uh, and to find out, we just need to examine the, the spherules, these uh, uh, marbles of metal that we found on the ocean floor. It, they were very challenging to find because they are the size of the head of a pin. Uh, and uh, we surveyed the region 10 kilometers in size using a magnetic sled, a sled with uh, magnets attached to it, but we found them. So now the next step is to analyze them with the best instruments that the world has to offer that we have at Harvard University. So, so Harvard will do the analysis uh, right there at the university? Yes. In fact, I just received the materials that are in my office right now. And tomorrow we are planning to distribute them to various instruments where we will figure out what they're made of in terms of elements, in terms of radioactive uh, isotopes, uh, compare the, those to solar system objects, and uh, figure out whether there is any, any trace of uh, 
an alloy or some kind of uh, rare elements that you don't find uh, at high concentrations in nature. How long do you think it'll take to figure it out? I mean, is, is, will you be releasing a report soon saying whether or not this, in fact, may have come from like an alien craft? It's a matter of weeks. Uh, within the coming weeks, by the end of July, I hope to know the answer. And, you know, it may well be a rock of a natural origin, but uh, one thing is clear, it came from outside the solar system and therefore it could be from a completely different environment. It's the first time that humans put their hands, and here I am putting my hand, yeah. on material uh, that uh, was associated with a big object that came from outside the solar system. Well, yeah, we I was going to ask you, Avi, is, is it weird having them in your office right now? I mean, not really knowing what they are? I mean, is there is there a potential that they could be dangerous or it's got to be kind of strange. You're just like you, they, they just got FedExed into you. <laughs> well, there is no risk. Uh, we checked them for any excess uh, radioactivity and we couldn't find any uh, any risk. Uh, so it's just uh, mostly iron. Uh, but uh, there are trace elements that we plan to uh, figure out. And, um, you know, uh, they sat on the ocean floor for almost a decade, and we now recover them uh, in a heroic scientific effort. And, of course, if they appear to be sufficiently unusual, we will go back to that site and look for a big piece of the original object because it would be easy to tell whether it's a rock or... Uh, some kind of a, a, a technological gadget. And of course, um, if, if it's a gadget, it might have buttons on it. And the fundamental question is, should we press a button? Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.